All right. We're going to start up another league here. I had uh, quite a few recommendations and a couple tips here. Mostly from, you know, the same person here. We're going, we're going to try to play better for the two people that have been watching these videos so far. Just thought I'd share. So, we're signed up in a league. And uh, let's see if we can find an opponent. Uh, the list is a little bit different this week, or well, today. I'm going to try Ugin again. I, I wasn't impressed with the Talisman, so I cut them all. And uh, we just threw in an Herborgan 2 against we're running 24 lands here. This just seems like a bit of a balance. And uh, we're going to give that a shot. Hopefully. Yeah, there's our opponent. Yeah, we're recording. Okay, so we've got our tower, a couple islands, and we got a couple control options too. I like this hand. I'll, I'll hold on to it. Uh, we're playing against Affinity. Turn one Ravager seems pretty good. No, uh, he was what a two drop? Yeah, it's two, so we'll go with our standard opening here. Nice to nice that we got the second map. That means we'll get Tron just a little bit faster. These first couple turns might hurt a little bit. He's probably going to be an issue. He's really going all in. I wonder if we'll get lucky and if he, uh, Winds up sacrificing his Mox Opal or his Fetch Champion. It'll be an interesting thing. We're going to take some damage this time here. Grab a mine, hopefully we will top deck our platinum angel. I think we'll wait till he attacks and we'll repeal. Portal man open. He's casting another signal post, okay. I don't want him sacrificing the Ravager, so we're we're going to repeal that. I'd rather take the one infect damage rather than eight, I think it would be. I don't want those counters on me, Moth, basically. I 
I think he's thinking about putting the counters onto it. Probably he's this edge champion. Most likely. He's definitely taking a moment. Exactly what I figured he would do. That does mean that we're probably not going to get any infect damage this time around. He's sacrificed. Okay, so he's going to load up the Ash Champion. He's really going to load it up. Signal test. Okay, that's fine. Ladder, we're still taking a bunch of damage. That's going to be five, six, seven, eight. That'll leave us at four life, not where we want to be. Establishing Tron won't do much for us here. I think we had a good starting hand, but we're just not, we're not really drawing anything. Yeah, we'll, we'll go to game two. Uh, we board a new game because it seems good, but our first opponent's affinity. We're going to bring in the Chalice of the Voids. Uh, Sun Droplets might do something here, too. This member will definitely work. Uh, Spell Snare. Yeah, that'll do something. Squatch will work for Ink Moth. Probably don't need that. Uh, Sundering Titan is not going to do much for us. We can trim a Mind Slaver. I like the Spell Snare, so I think we just keep that in. Uh, Repeal will work for us because that'll just slow him down. So we cut that. Don't think we need. I think we could survive without the Sun Droplets. Don't need Spell Sky. Because I'm pretty sure modular only allows me to put stuff on artifacts he controls. I want to keep the Platinum Angel in. Oblivion Stone. We need that. Do need the Treasure Mages. We'll go down a map. Cyclonic Rift will be good. Trim the other Mind Slaver. Hmm. Okay, I'll just cut back on Thirst of Knowledge. We'll try this. A uh, list for this deck is actually going to be in the description like all the other videos. So if there was better sideboarding device you guys could have given me, it would be appreciated. Uh, we have a three drop blocker and stuff in hand. No, 
Okay. See here we have a decision. Do I want to hold on to the cyclonic rift? I think I will. It's just one damage right now. Spell sky weak encounter. Chalice is fine. We'll keep them both on top, but I want that island. Uh, we are not going to play the treasure mage, we're just going to pass the turn. Thought sees is fine. He doesn't know we have a chalice on top of the library, so might be able to go somewhere. When we get the chalice, we'll set it to two. That'll get rid of the vault scourges. I think it, that'll hit cranial plate in two, and as well as the dark cloud ravager. At least I'm pretty sure cranial plating is a two drop. The advantage, yeah, that's two drop. That's fine, I will take one damage. Seal Overseer is fine. We'll set Chalice on two, past the turn. This does mean that we won't be on. Oh, I should have. I already did a misplay there. Should return the Steel Overseer back to his hand at the end of his last turn. Because I don't even think we can overload it. So he's animating them both. He's going to just have to steal or seer at some point. I imagine he's going to animate that one as well. Okay. There's a tectonic edge that's good against Ink Moth. One, two, three, four, five lands. We can't cast War Coil yet. Play Treasure Mage. Grab another War Coil. Yeah, I'm fine with that.
stolen. He's starting to do a lot of damage. That's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Do we let the ink moth live? I'll let the battle card trigger go through so we can do the right math. That's going to be 3 in fact, bumping us up to 5. 6 in total if he taps the seal over here, which I imagine he's probably planning on doing. So, we're looking at 4, 8, 12. 4, 8, 12, 14 damage in total. Uh, we can Tectonic Edge, a Blink Moth Nexus. 4, 8, 12, 14. Hmm. Problem is they fly. I think we just hit the, hit the blink moth nexus, but I think we lose the match. And I accidentally skipped blockers. Shit. Uh, you're just gonna swing out at me next turn. I can dismember block and still die. Assuming he swings out. Feeling attacks with two creatures and keeps the steel overseer back for some reason. I'll survive another turn. That doesn't buy me anything though, I don't think. Not because he has a blank moth nexus. It'll fly over us and kill us. Okay, yeah. Well, first game was bad for us. We misplayed. Hmm. Yeah. Cyclonic Rift was a dead card as soon as we played the chalice. Because it's converted mana cost is not the overload cost. It's still just a two drop. So if we return Steel Overseer back to his hand before we drop the chalice, we'd probably still be playing. Alternatively, I probably did the entire sideboard wrong. Ugin definitely would have went out because Ugin can only hit colored things, which he's playing affinity. Sundering Titan would not have done anything for me unless I had an Urborg out, which I didn't. Spell Sky would not have done anything for me, I don't think. The only thing you could affect would be Archon Ravager.
Oh, so he just says target artifact creature. So, Spell Sky does have some use. I still don't like it. Because we can Spell Sky the modern abilities and put the plus one plus one counters on Spell Sky. Yeah, just a misplay there. And that cost us the game. 